show you how I made a card with the Rustic Crate Stamp Set Bundle, which is one of the bundles from the upcoming September to December 2023 mini catalogs. This bundle will actually be available to purchase starting on September 6th. Um, so, oh goodness, I got the video, the camera, all sorts of crazy again. <laughs> so, all right, so the... Um, uh, product will be available starting on September 6th for customers to order. Um, it's available now for demonstrators to pre-order. So if you are not currently a demonstrator, this is a great time to join because you can add uh, products from your starter or from the new catalog to your starter kit. So it is a great time to join if you are not currently a demonstrator. If you have questions about it, let me know. But once you join, you get at least a 20% discount on all the products that you purchase. And you can attend Stamp It Up Only events. You get to order early from the catalog. So it's a great, great deal. So let me know if you have questions. I'd be happy to chat with you about it. And um, if you join with us, then of course you get to be part of our awesome little team. Um, no pressure to buy, sell, anything like that. Um, you don't have to do videos or anything. You can just order and get the discount for yourself. So again, let me know if you have questions. So hey, I see Jackie's here and Mary Ellen and Carol and Mary Ruth and Mary and uh, Carol. Oh, and did I say Carol already? Oh, we have two Carols on. And Barbara, thanks so much for joining today. I appreciate you being here. All right, so this is the card we're going to be making. And hey, Connie, thanks for hopping in and uh, saying hello. Uh, so this is the card we're going to be making. Um, fall, I'm all about fall right now. <laughs> I do love fall. It's my favorite season. And so I thought I would show you really quickly how I did this. All right, um, stamp set. This is it. It's called Rustic Crate. Again, it's got some nice sentiments in it. I love the images in it. And it's got coordinating dies. So, of course, you know I'm all about that. So, hey, Dolores and Jean and Kathy and Vaughn. I'm glad you all are joining today. It's a photopolymer stamp set, so it makes for easy stamping. You can see through, see where you're stamping at, um, which is really nice. And, um, yeah, then there are dies that coordinate with it. So this one, we're going to be using today the outline one to cut out the... Oh, wait, no, that's not it. That's the outline for the poinsettia. Sorry. Um, so yeah, so this one we're going to be using to cut out, or you'd use to cut out the poinsettias. This one will cut out your crate image. This one will cut out the image we're using today, which is the pumpkins. And then uh, this one is the one that cuts out the kind of general greenery. There's a set of garden gloves in here. And then there are the crate images. And it looks a little confusing, but it's actually really easy to put this crate together. And I will show you how to do that today. This is a little handle, the one that's kind of a C shape is a handle for the crate. And then this actually makes the little name plate and I did use all those little pieces on it. Um, and then there are a couple of the is it little strap things that you put on a crate, on the side of a crate. I don't know what the term is for those, but that's what those are. <laughs> some, some little uh, decorative pieces for your crate. Um, so again, it's a really good die set, really easy to use. And uh, yeah, we use the Hello Sentiment as well. So hey, Pam and Gina Marie and Debbie, glad y'all are joining today. All right, um, one other thing that I did use is the new Deckled Circles dies. And this is an enormous set of dies. <laughs> I was very happy to see them. They aren't really showcased very well in the new mini catalog. They're towards the back. I want to say on like page 60 something. Um, so they're towards the back of the catalog, but don't miss them because you'll definitely want to get them. It's a huge set of dies. I use the sixth from the smallest die on here, which is you know, I'm sure y'all can, <laughs> I don't want to count it out, but it's the sixth from the smallest. So it's this one that's right in here. Um, but yeah, there are tons and tons of dies in this. So, hey, Danette, thanks for joining. And if I didn't say hi to Pam, hey, Pam. Although I think I did. I can't remember. Anyway. Okay, a couple things before we get going. Um, kits collection, they're all on sale. Hey, Linda. Um, it, the die, I'm not going to lie, did confuse me for a minute when I first looked at it. I was trying to fold it backwards. And once I figured out the right way to fold it, it's really easy to put it together. So I'll show you in the video how to do it. So, all right. Um, Kit's collection is on sale for the month of August uh, for up to 30% off. So yay, if you are a kit person, and I do love them for, um, I love them for holiday cards, love them for birthday cards, things like that, um, where you need to get a stack of cards made in a hurry. Um, Go take a peek at the kits. They're all on sale. Even a brand new kit that they just put out that's Christmas tags is on sale. So yeah, go check that out. Go grab a few of those. And then don't forget to redeem your bonus days coupon. So if you earn some of those during the month of July, you have the entire month of August to spend them. And yes, you can hook these together so you can get the kits on sale and redeem your coupons on your order. Um, there's no maximum amount of coupons you can redeem on an order, uh, no minimum order to redeem the coupons. So go have fun spending, apply your $5 off coupons and uh, yeah, get your orders put in before the end of August. 
So, uh, hey, Deborah, thanks for joining. And uh, hi, Marcia, thanks for hopping in as well. Uh, then online exclusives. While you're out uh, looking around the online star store at the kits, make sure you take a peek at the online exclusives too. There are some new things uh, for the holidays in particular that are posted out there. And so, yeah, so go take a peek at those um, details for all that. It's currently on my blog. It'll be on there again tomorrow when this video posts. So go take a peek at my blog, which is stampwithamyk.com. And um, you can, if you have any questions about anything, let me know. All right, so let's get started on this card. So uh, I did pre-cut quite a few of the pieces ahead of time because it gets a little tedious watching me chop things up. Um, it's not very exciting. So this is a piece, I'm gonna flip it over and show you the back side, which is so pretty, of the Garden Walk Designer Series paper. And it's W-A-L-K, like going out for a walk in the garden. Um, so Garden Walk Designer Series paper. Um, and it is in the upcoming mini catalog as well. Again, will be available on the 6th of September for customers to purchase. This piece is cut to about three and five eighths by about uh, four and seven eighths. And I'm gonna adhere it to a piece of um, wild wheat cardstock. This is cut to about three and a half, or I'm sorry, three and three quarters by about five inches. All the details will be on my blog with the actual measurements <laughs> on it uh, tomorrow. So go take a peek at that. I will link up the blog post in the description of this video so you can go back and take a look at all of the um, cardstock cuts and everything that I used on the project tomorrow. Then I've got a couple of pieces of the One Horse Open Sleigh Designer Series paper. While the one side of this is definitely very wintry and Christmassy, the other side has got some really just good colors, good sort of neutral backgrounds. So this piece is cut to about two and a half inches by about four and seven eighths um, tall. And then this one, I don't know, it was just a scrap. It's about three quarters of an inch or so wide by four and seven eighths inches tall. And I'm gonna use a little stamp and seal to adhere these two pieces together. There we go. And there's no like specific amount that I wanted peeking out. I just kind of wanted a little peek of the crumb cake around the edge of the Mossy Meadow designer series paper. So I just adhered it to the edge and only one edge. And I don't know why I only did one edge. I guess I was feeling lazy, <laughs> but I thought, I don't know, something a little different because usually I do even edges all the way around things. And you know, sometimes I got to do things differently. All right. So I'm going to take a little bit of stamp and seal and I'm going to adhere this to my um, card stock panel here, my designer series paper panel. I'm going to try to get it fairly centered here. Hopefully I've got it. Um, so that will help me hopefully to line up my mossy meadow panel. And again, what I want to be centered is the mossy meadow. And um, if it's all off centered, that's okay. Cause then you meant it to be that way. Cause that's why you got the extra piece sticking out there. At least that's my theory and I'm sticking to it. <laughs> so, all right, there we go. All right. I'm going to um, scoot this over for a second. And I did die cut ahead of time. Hopefully I can get my fingers around it. Um, one of these circles, again, this is the sixth from the smallest of the deckled rectangle circles. And it is a huge, huge set of dies that are also gonna be available in the upcoming mini catalog. So starting on the 6th of September, you'll be able to order those as well. And I've got pecan pie ink and a blending brush. And we're just gonna add a little bit of pecan pie ink around the edges of this again just to make it look a little more fall-ish um fall-esque i don't know if that's the right word but just put a little little ink i just didn't want the stark white basically um so it doesn't need to be a lot of ink around the edge just a little bit and that'll do it one more little swipe here i think and it doesn't even really need to be extremely evenly inked or anything like that just because a lot of it will be covered up by your die cuts. All right, I'm gonna close that up and set it aside before I stick my fingers in it. And then we're gonna start building our little crate. So, hey Mary, thanks for hopping in. Ordered it, uh, ordered the sweet, yep, it's a, oh. I'm so glad that you ordered it. I'm glad that you like it. <laughs> that makes me smile. So, um, and Deborah hopped in and Akiko is here as well. So thanks for joining today. All right, so dies, the crate dies. I've got little pieces everywhere, okay. These are cut from, car, from Chrome Cake cardstock, and I used this die and this die to cut them. All right, so just run each one through once. The front is kind of, it cuts and embosses, so hopefully you can see that if the light will catch it right. I don't know if it will or not. And then the back just cuts some little sort of score lines in it, um, the back of the crate. Now, I will tell you, when I first put this, was trying to put this together, I was bending these 
tabs backwards because that's sort of my natural way to want to bend cardstock. Uh, when it's scored on the top, usually you bend it around the back. That did not work. So what you need to do with it is actually bend it in the opposite direction that you think you would. So you're bending it all towards the center like that. And I believe that the reason that they did this is so that this score line, when you line these two things up together, will show through and it'll look like a corner of the crate. So I assume that's why the die was put together the way that it was, um, not to confuse us, <laughs> but to, um, to basically just make sure that it looked like the uh, inside of your, your um, crate had a little score line down it or a bend line in it as well. So, all right, so I am just smooshing these down here really well, making sure that hopefully I get it fairly flat. And I'm just gonna add my nemesis of adhesives, a little liquid glue. <laughs> and you all know, if you watch my videos, you know that I do not love liquid glue because I usually end up with it stuck to me and everywhere that it shouldn't be. And then I'm just gonna take my front crate die cut and we're just gonna lay it down over the top of the bottom crate. And I'm gonna turn it here and then the liquid glue does give me a second to sort of wiggle it around and make sure that I have everything in the right place. And now I'm gonna hold it for a second <laughs> and make sure that it's stuck down. Hopefully it will be when I let it go. So, hey, Marilyn, thanks for hopping in and Sue is here as well and Karen. So, all right. So there we go. That's how it goes together. It's, it's much easier than it looks and it's much easier than I was trying to make it be <laughs> when I very first um, did the die cuts. It took me a minute. But I figured if I could save you some time um, and you love this die set, go ahead. All right, so there we go. I don't know how many minutes we are into the video, but I'll try to mark it, I don't know, 12 minutes or so in, 10 minutes or so in, where I start showing you how to put this together. Um, so you can come back once you get it and um, put it together yourself. All right, then I die cut this piece. Again, this is the little handle piece, which is this sort of C-shaped die from the Rustic Crates dies. and Rustic Crate, not with an S on it, Rustic Crate die. And uh, I'm gonna put just a tiny little touch of liquid glue as my hands are not very steady. And I'm gonna tuck that down inside. It is a good bundle. <laughs> you definitely need to get it. So at least, you know, I think you do. And then I'm gonna just slide this down inside the die cut. And I don't know, there's no like, again, no specific way that you have to put this in here, no height that it has to be at or anything like that. But basically I just wanted to, to have it a little bit secured. Putting that little tiny dot of glue on there will hold it and hold it in place while I stick everything else together. And that was mainly what I wanted with putting that together like that. All right, now I'm gonna take a little bit of stamp and seal and we're gonna go ahead and stick this to my circle that I've cut here. And I should say, you know, a little bit, a lot of stamp and seal that I'm putting all over this, gooping it around. Whoop, there we go. I'm gonna pull back my circle and we're just gonna take that and sort of roughly center it. A little bit of the crate's hanging off, but there you go, that's it. So. Um, Oh, I'm glad it helped you. Yep, it's definitely, <laughs> definitely, um, it was confusing to me when I first looked at it. So you're not the only one if you're confused by it and can't figure out how in the world to get it to work, you're not the only one. Like I said, it took me a couple minutes of bending everything the wrong direction <laughs> before I finally was like, oh, just turn it the other way and then it works. All right, so I did die cut um, ahead of time. Whoop, almost dropped it. Uh, this is the little, the, the double die cut little strap things here for the side of the crate. I, uh, before I cut these, I actually put some adhesive sheets on the back. So to make it a little bit easier to stick these on. And I think we'll go ahead and put the one back here. And I'm just gonna kind of set it on for now. And then same thing with the other one, use the adhesive sheets. And I do find that a tweezers or your pokey tool or whatever, um, makes it much easier to peel off the adhesive sheets because sometimes they can be, you know, a little stubborn. They want to get, they stick really, really well to the back of the cardstock, especially after you run it through the die cutting machine. All right, so there we go. Stuck those on with the adhesive sheets. So super easy so far. <laughs> so, um, 
All right, next up, I'm gonna grab some cardstock, some basic white cardstock, and get rid of those before I end up with those stuck out to something. And I'm gonna scoot that aside. And then I've got the image that's got the corn and the pumpkins and sunflowers on it. And we're gonna ink it in tuxedo black memento ink. And I'll try not to wiggle the screen all over as I do that. But there we go. I think we'll get it good. And we'll see what it'll stamp like. And if it's yucky, then we'll just flip it over and stamp it again. So, hey, Anna, thanks for joining. All right, looks like we got a pretty good image on it. Now I'm going to pull in a bunch of Stampin' Blends markers. And I'll try to remember to tell you the colors I'm using as I'm using them. So pumpkin pie is the first color that I'm using and I'm starting with the light pumpkin pie and we're going to color obviously the pumpkins with pumpkin pie. I probably should have done some of this coloring ahead of time but um, that's all right. I guess you all can listen to me mumble through this. So putting on light pumpkin pie first. So you all loving the new, how many of you have seen the new mini catalog? Hopefully most of you have seen it already. Um, I know I mailed mine out to my customers uh, and I'm hearing that they're starting to arrive, so I'm always excited and happy to see that, um, see what, how, how my customers like it. And I'm hearing from most of them that they're loving it, so I'm hoping that everybody is as well. Everybody else is. So it's been one of my favorite catalogs in a while, so I really, really like it a lot. So, all right, going to move on to dark pumpkin pie, and we're going to add a couple little shadows in here. So, hey, Karen, thanks for joining. No worries, you know. I know that can't spend the entire day with me, so, <laughs> you know. All right, going to add in a couple shadows here with the Dark Pumpkin Pie Stampin' Blends marker. Color that in down there. Do some little shading here, kind of, again, areas where I feel like it would be darker. I am not an excellent um, person at the, you know, knowing exactly where all the shadows and things go. I generally tend to sort of follow the, the stamped image. If there are any clues on there, you know, the little extra lines and things that they put on, that helps me to know exactly where I can and um, where I should and shouldn't add the, the um, shadows at. So, all right. So again, just coming in and trying to blend away some of the, a little bit of the harsh line on the pumpkins with the light pumpkin pie stamp and blends marker and I can see a couple people left comments and I'll look up in a second but I don't want to look up while I'm trying to color these pumpkins otherwise I'll make a total mess of things so all right so those are colored um, loving everything in the mini good 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 I'm glad to see that looks like everybody is too so uh, what are the other small dies with the holes for I'm assuming that you're talking about these and what I believe that they would be, I mean, I think you could use them however you wanted to on here, but I think you could also use them as maybe as a, like a something to hang the little nameplate with. I don't know. I'll have to play around with them a little bit, but that would be what I would suspect is that maybe something like, oh, you know what? It just occurred to me what they're for. They're for the corners of the corners of your of the crate you know how they reinforce them sometimes with those sort of rounded look that's what they're for <laughs> so I hadn't I hadn't actually cut them and hadn't played with them yet so um, but yep at least I believe that's what they're for is that you put them on the corners of that okay um, next I think we'll do the coloring of the sunflowers and I've got light and dark um, daffodil delight brackets okay that's yep so it, I, hopefully that's what the corner pieces are called so there we go. Again, starting with the light Daffodil Delight to color in most of the sunflower. And I'll try not to go too far out of the lines. Sometimes my coloring is a little better than others. But that's the one nice thing about the blends is they're very forgiving, particularly on these types of images where there's a lot going on. Um, if you accidentally color out of the lines like I do very often, it's pretty easy to, to cover it up and just color with another Stampin' Blends marker and sort of blend it together. And then nobody knows you made a mess. So, all right. Um, got Dark Daffodil Delight. And again, I'm just coming in in the areas where um, the shading is already drawn in on the stamp for me, which helps me to figure out where to put the, the shading in the dark for my, again, this is Dark Daffodil Delight that I'm coloring in here. And I see somebody said they feel like they've already purchased half the catalog. I'm not even gonna tell you how much of the catalog I purchased. <laughs> 
if you saw my unboxing video, you have a pretty good idea of how much I've purchased. And it's a lot more than half. <laughs> so I didn't buy every single thing, I promise. I left a few things, you know, for you guys to, to discover in the catalog yourselves. Um, and I didn't want to, you know, like take it all from everybody else. But I took a lot of it because I really liked it. <laughs> so I feel like, like I said, I feel like it's one of the best catalogs we've had in a while. So, um, and I always get excited. I love the holiday catalogs anyway and the fall. And, you know, I just, that's my favorite time of year, favorite time to, to, um, make cards, so I'm always happy when the holiday catalog is here. All right, uh, Pecan Pie is the next Stampin' Blends that I'm using, and I'm using the light first to color in the center of my sunflowers. So time to buy a lottery ticket, um, yeah. <laughs> yep, I definitely, definitely agree. So, um, oh, I'm glad your catalog arrived, Connie, and uh, yep, always exciting, so. All right, and then I'm just gonna come in with a little bit of the dark, a little bit of dark, not a lot, um, and that, you can barely even see it on there. So if you don't want to go back with that, you don't have to. All right, Old Olive is the next one. And I've got the light Old Olive Stampin' Blends marker. And I'm using that to color the leaves for, um, I think these are pumpkin and sunflower leaves, but I'm not entirely sure. They're different than the corn, uh, corn leaves or corn husks. So I went with a different color of green on those. A little bit lighter. So, all right. So light. Old olive, and then I'll come back in with a little dark old olive, and again, just kind of add in a little color where I feel like it would be a, a little bit darker underneath the leaves or the petals of the flower, and anywhere where the leaves are overlapping. And then I'm going to come back with my light, just make sure that I filled in all the spaces, and kind of lightly do a little bit of blending anywhere where I feel like there's a harsh line. All right, there we go. Almost done with the coloring. Next up is wild wheat, and I just used the light wild wheat on the corn. Um, if you want it to be, you know, want to do a little more shading on it, you certainly can do that. Add in some dark wild wheat, but I just went with light. All right, because I didn't want the corn to get too, too dark, but I also didn't want it. I thought about using yellow, the um, daffodil, but then I'm like, eh, then it'll blend, blend in too much with the sunflowers. So I wanted them to be a little distinct, but not way, way different. All right, then I've got Mossy Meadow for the last um, color here that I'm gonna be coloring in the, whoop, and that's the dark. Eek, that is not the one I wanted to start with. That's okay, we're gonna add some dark in anyway. So like I said, the blends are pretty forgiving if you do what I just did and do a little, whoops, that didn't mean to color like that. So then I've got my light Mossy Meadow. I'm gonna come in here and color a little bit down in near the sunflowers. And then the final little corn image over here. All right, I'm gonna come back. I've got um, dark and I already colored the one piece really um, with a lot of dark. So I don't probably need to add too much more to that one, but I'll add a little bit around the edges of the other images here. And that's it. So, really easy to color. Added a little bit of a little bit of blending to it, but again, I'm not really an expert at coloring, so I just do what looks good to me and then I quit. So, um, happy accidents. I do agree, Debbie. That's yes, and I do make a lot of them. <laughs> so, all right. So I'm going to bring the die set back over again, and this one fits perfectly around this stamped image. So I'm going to run this through my die cutting machine. I'll be right back. And there's my die cut image. Now I'm just gonna grab a little bit of stamp and seal and I'm gonna run it across the back a couple of times. And then we're gonna take that and we're just gonna tuck it down inside the little basket that we've already created. And I, you don't have to push it all the way down into the basket if you don't want to. You can put it as far in or out as you want to. I just wanted to make it look like there were things peeking through the little cuts on here, the little, um, slits on the side and a little cut on the front. So that was sort of how I decided where to place it on here. And I'm just smushing it down so that my, the adhesive sticks. 
then we're going to take that and we're going to actually put it on the card front, which I totally didn't even assemble. So <laughs> oh, I'm glad you're liking it. So it's it's a fun little stamp set. And I love I love it when I can create a scene with dies instead of, you know, creating a scene by being crazy and loud and obnoxious. So I like to, I love to create little scenes and fall. Like I said, fall is my favorite time. I love the colors of fall. Um, so, yep, always happy to create fall cards. All right. Peeling off the Stampin' Dimensionals, I do chop my Stampin' Dimensionals in half. Um, if you don't like to do that, you can certainly use whole Stampin' Dimensionals, so it's completely up to you what you like. All right, stick that to the card front, and then I'm going to stick the entire layered card front to the card base. Um, the card base is Mossy Meadow, and uh, my original card, I'll show you in a second, is a top fold card. Um, so the details for it are going to talk about the top fold card as far as the card base goes. But I also like to show if I have a card base cut um, that you can pretty much most of my cards you can either do on a top fold or a side fold or a book fold card. So you can choose which your is your favorite type of card base and um, use that with your card. So this is just a standard book fold card. So it's five and a half by eight and a half scored at four and a quarter down the middle. So it's a half sheet of cardstock. And then I've got, um, this one is my original card and it is a top fold card. So that's how I do it. This is four and a quarter by 11 and scored at five and a half across the top. So there you go. All right, and the video on my computer just got a little fuzzy. I'm hoping that I'm still clear for you guys. So holler at me if it's not looking great and I'll see if I can make some changes to it, but I'm hoping the video is still looking okay. Um, so also did a little die cutting ahead of time with um, this die. This is like the little, I don't know, nameplate die or the, the die that you would write whatever's in the basket on. Um, and it's actually, a, it's a pair of dies. So when you cut it, you're going to get this and this both. Um, so I've cut some of it from basic white cardstock. All clear, good. Okay. Sometimes my computer gets all fuzzy and I don't know why. And then I worry that it's looking all yucky for you guys too. And I'm glad it's not. So, all right, pecan pie. And got, um, there we go. Going to ink up the little for you sentiment. Get rid of the little scraps of icky on there. And we're going to stamp it on the die cut. So there you go. All right. And then I have got... Um, this is, I had cut from, good for you also, Karen, thanks, um, I appreciate that. So I had cut this from gold foil sheets ahead of time, and I had put the adhesive um, sheets on the back of it before I had cut it. So I'm going to try to layer this together, and hopefully I can get it lined up reasonably well. All right, maybe, before I stick it down for good. There we go. Wiggling it around just a little. All right, so we can adhere the two together. So, uh, loving the color. Oh, I'm glad. Like I said, fall is my favorite season, so I love all the colors and everything about fall. Love the leaves. So, all right, put a little bit of liquid glue on the back of that, and then we are gonna put that here on our little crate. And I'm gonna hold it down for just a second, and hopefully the glue will take hold before I let go. There we go. All right. Um, also did a little die cutting of the sentiment ahead of time. So again, I've cut this from gold foil sheets and this one from pumpkin pie cardstock. And I had put the adhesive sheets on the back of these before I die cut them. If you don't have adhesive sheets, definitely you should get some. <laughs> They're one of the best things ever. Um, all right, flipping this one over and then I'm gonna go and pick the adhesive sheets off the back of here off the back of the pumpkin pie die cut. Um, they work really well for these little kind of intricate and delicate die cuts to stick them down um, because if you're like me and struggle with liquid glue and get heavy handed with it, the adhesive sheets sort of take care of that problem for you. All right, what I want this to be, whether it'll end up being or not, is I wanted it to have just a little peak of the gold around the edge of the pumpkin pie die cut so I'm just sort of lightly, lightly tapping these down until I get it in the place where I want it to be. And then I'm squeezing it together so that they adhere together. So there you go. Got a little bit of a, a peak of gold around the pumpkin pie. So oh, I'm glad you're liking it, Marilyn. So, and then I'm gonna pick the 
little um, adhesive backing off of that die cut. And then we're just gonna put that right underneath the basket. And there are lines sort of in this designer series paper, so that'll help you to line up things, hopefully get it on there straight. And if not, it's all right, it's a handmade card, so all is good. All right, last thing on the card front is I've got some of the brushed metallic adhesive back dots, and I was gonna use the gold ones on here. Oh, I'm glad you found it, Kathy. Thanks for joining. All right, and I've got one of the larger ones. I'm gonna pick that off and set it down for a second, and then I've got a smaller one. Okay, the smaller one decided it was not gonna cooperate as much, so there we go, whoop. All right, see, see, whoop, come on, come back. There we go. I'm gonna scoot this one down just a hair as well. She says, not very confidently. All right, there we go, smooshing them down, so. Um, just got some of the um, dots. Yep, yep, it's a good one. So they are, they are some of my favorite adhesives. They're fair, or favorite adhesives, favorite um, embellishments is what I meant to say. They're fairly flat and they're neutral, so they kind of go with everything, which is, you know, love that. All right, so that's it for the card front. Super easy. You know, you all can do this. Like I said, now that you know how to put the crate together and I've saved you a little bit of time of scratching your head and saying, what in the world, how do you do this? Um, then we've got... A, he, a piece of um, basic white cardstock. This is cut to about four by five and a quarter. And this is just a little leftover scrap that I had trimmed uh, when I was cutting the card fronts from the uh, One Horse Open Sleigh Designer Series paper. Sticking that down with some uh, stamp and seal. And then I'm just gonna trim off the little extra piece here. There we go. All right, oh, I'm glad you all are liking the card. So it's, yep. All right. I love this little, little um, crate. That was one of the first things that I saw in the catalog that I'm like, yep, definitely going to have to get that. So, And I love that it kind of goes across all the seasons, so you can use it for fall and um, Christmas and kind of everything that you want. So, all right, sticking this on the inside of the card with a little stamp and seal. And then I forgot, again, my bone folder. Darn it. So I'll just smush it down with my finger. That'll have to be good enough for now. I'll grab the bone folder later. So, So there you go. This is a card ahead of time. This is a card we made today. Um, the stamp set, again, is called Rustic Crate, and it is from the new uh, mini catalog that'll be available starting on September 6th. So be sure uh, to order it once it's available because you're going to love it. At least I love it. And then the coordinating dies that go with it are also called Rustic Crate, which makes it easy to remember and easy to order. Um, they are bundled together, so be sure to grab those together and um, check out the designer series paper in this catalog is amazing. So definitely check all of that out as well. Uh, let me know if you have any questions about anything. Um, again, all the details will be on my blog tomorrow, which is stampwithamyk.com. And I will link up directly to the blog post in the description of this video. So feel free to stop by and check it out again tomorrow. And again, if you want to get some of this product in your hands early, join as a demonstrator. Let me know if you have questions. Be happy to chat with you more about it. All right. Talk with you all soon.